after about 21 months, with no one in residence, in a rather nice residence, let it be said, this week the new US ambassador, the new US ambassador to Ireland, presented his credentials to President Michael D. Higgins on being given the role Kevin O'Man. I come here only 100 years after my grandparents left County Mayo for life in the United States. I come here with gratitude for all that the Irish people and the Irish government have done for my country. I'd just like to say that uh, Ambassador Kevin O'Malley is so welcome here to Ireland. We're very grateful to President Obama for having nominated him and for Kevin in accepting, uh, in accepting uh, this appointment. He is one of the great lawyers of America and both he and his wife, Dana, are very welcome here. Um, we look forward to getting out and seeing as many parts of Ireland as we can. We look forward to meeting as many of, of, of you as we can. Ambassador O'Malley, when he arrived, he made it very clear that one of his key priorities was strengthening the amazing US-Ireland business relationship. And he's been so true to his word. Ambassador O'Malley has visited Irish operations of US companies from West Kerry to South Wexford to North Donegal and everywhere in between. And he has spoken so passionately about how he has been so impressed by the extraordinary talent of the 140,000 people working for US companies here in Ireland and the way they are innovating and creating products and services that are truly enhancing and saving lives throughout the world. And one of the things I am so proud of our ambassador, Ambassador O'Malley, is he has gone out of his way to reach in every nook and cranny, every organization, big and small, to, uh, to get to know, to get to know this country, to get to know what makes it tick, to get to, to get to know each of the individuals. It's personal. And I think he's done our country a great, great service. So we've had a chance to come up to the very top of Skellig Michael, to see the, the place where the monks lived, to see their chapel, and to feel uh, the spirituality and the monasticism that existed here 1,500 years ago. It's not sticky, it's, it's uh, that's a nice texture to it. I don't know that I know what to, how to cook it, but, uh, but you didn't ask me that. <laughs> During my time in Ireland, I have really grown fond of GAA sports, uh, hurling and, and football. Uh, uh, sitting in Croke Park on Sundays in the summer has been uh, a memory I'll cherish for a long time. And, you know, I've been lucky that I've got a team uh, in, in Mayo which uh, has produced some great, exciting GAA football games for me during my tenure. Kevin, I've seen and shared your passion for our native county. Unfortunately, we were not able to bring home Sam during your time here, but like me in this matter, you are an eternal optimist, and hopefully we will have an opportunity sometime soon to be in Croke Park together when the green and red lift that elusive title. Getting to know the young people of Ireland has been a key focus of my time. Through the J-1 program, which is that traditional rite of passage for Irish students, I've met many of Ireland's best and the brightest. Along with the very best moments of my tenure, it has also brought the saddest moment. What happened yesterday in the early hours in Berkeley, California was a tragedy in many levels. Six young lives ended suddenly at a moment of young happiness, summer away from home, staying in an exciting city, spending a night at a party with young friends, and then all of it ended so tragically at a news conference in Berkeley. So in their memory, we plant this tree and honor them forever with this plaque. And may this tree grow as do the ties that bind Ireland and the United States. The plaque reads appropriately from James Joyce. They lived and laughed 
and loved and left. They will not be forgotten. Although Kevin's only been in Ireland for 18 months, he has crammed in almost eight years of work. One of his legacies will be his Creative Minds Initiative, in which he's been busy connecting the next generation of Irish and American leaders who will be singing in this room someday. When I first met Ambassador Kevin O'Malley, I knew I had encountered um, a remarkable individual. He arrived in Ireland and he immediately made a ripple in the community of artists or the place of culture. He just indicated that wouldn't it be interesting if we were to take some creative minds from America and almost have a fireside chat with some folks about their practice, what it is they do and the business of creativity. He's managed uh, almost single-handedly to turn Deerfield, which is the US um, ambassador's residence here, into one of the coolest music uh, venues and one of the coolest arts venues through the Creative Mind series. I went to the Creative Minds conference to talk about the creative minds that are needed to make the world's most advanced products, you know, microprocessors. But it turned out to be a conference like none other that I've ever been at before or since. It was just fabulous to meet so many creative minds from so many parts of Ireland and so many different disciplines. As soon as we walked in the door, just the warmest welcome, I said, I just can't thank you enough. And he said, this is your house. This is the America, you know, this is the house of the people of the United States of America. I've never heard an ambassador say that before. Right. As Dean and I leave you, uh, one thing I know for certain is that America's relationship with Ireland will continue to thrive because the ties that keep us together are so deeply rooted and so strong and, and growing uh, each year. Uh, every day that I've been here, I've been inspired by the greatness uh, of the Irish people. In the days ahead, I will continue to do everything that I can to enhance, to broaden, and to deepen this enduring friendship. I hold great gratitude in my heart to President Obama for giving me this opportunity, and I will hold you in my heart forever. <laughs>